Hey everybody, today's video is a little bit different. So I was sent something pretty cool in the mail to review. It is the Viver uh, Ultrasonic Record Cleaner. And I think I'm saying that name right, Vivor, I believe that's right, Viver, Vivor. Uh, and they reached out to me um, a couple of weeks ago. They asked me if I was interested in trying out their record cleaner because as a lot of you probably know, uh, I have been using just uh, I think one of the the spin clean uh, record cleaners, which is just uh, do it by hand, and it's just you can do one record at a time, and that was working okay for me, is what I would say. Um, but I've had a lot of people uh, over the years that I've had my YouTube channel have asked me how do I clean my records. Um, they've asked me uh, what they should pick up to clean some records. So I'm going to make this video to show you this particular record cleaner, uh, give you my thoughts and opinions on it, show you. Um, the process that I use to clean some records and uh, just give you an overall, uh, my overall opinion of what I think of this machine. So I went to my local record store and I found some really beaten up kind of uh, extra dirty records to, to put in uh, with the machine for this first wash. Um, the machine can wash up to eight records at a time. So I wanted to uh, do eight for my first run. Uh, and so I picked up uh, some of these uh, sorry sorts at the record store, and some of them are actually pretty cool. I picked up this Bob Dylan Highway 61 Revisited. This is an original mono pressing, and again, it has um, a few a few scratches here and there. But some of these old mono records, um, the scratches actually really won't affect it all that much, just because the grooves are a lot deeper than um, some of the modern pressings. So sometimes you can get away with a couple of scratches on these older 60s um, pressings. Uh, but so this is an, a mono, an original mono, so I'm excited to see how this one cleans up. Uh, and then I'll, that one I'll show in a second. Um, and the other one I picked up was Led Zeppelin's Physical Graffiti. Um, and this one is not is in pretty good shape. It's just very, very dirty is what I'll say. It's got little specks of, um, I don't know what's on there, uh, maybe like just dirt or, or something or paint, possibly something like that. But uh, overall, it's actually in okay shape, but I think it'll clean up really, really well. So I was happy to, uh, to throw this in with the rest of the records. And by the way, this is a US pressing on the Swan Song label. Um, and then uh, Tea for the Tillerman by Cat Stevens. Uh, these, I see these all the time in like thrift stores and record shops. Um, and this is actually a particular pressing that I've heard is very, very good. This is a US Monarch pressing. Uh, and again, this one has a bunch of scratches on it. Um, I'm not sure it's going to, uh, I'm sure even after cleaning it up, I don't know if it's going to be all that great, but I just thought it'd be a good one to throw in there just because it's acoustic music and with um, the lighter acoustic music, you can really hear the surface noise uh, a lot uh, clearer um, than like with like a loud rock uh, album because that'll just you know drown out most of the surface noise. But on this one, you'll really hear all the imperfections in the vinyl. So I thought this would be a good one to throw in there. And then let's see. Uh, so those are the ones that I picked up at the record store that were really really dirty. And then I had some other ones just in my collection that I just wanted to clean anyway. Uh, and this is one that is a what I consider a stellar pressing. Uh, this is Don Fagan's uh, The Nightfly. This is, of course, a classic record. Um, and this is um, just an amazing sounding pressing. This is my second copy of this particular pressing that I like. And this one was uh, a little bit dirty. I haven't really uh, haven't gotten around to actually cleaning it properly. So I thought I would throw this one into the batch to show you what um, a really high quality pressing can sound like when it's clean with this machine. So we're gonna throw that one in there as well. And then I just had a couple a couple of days ago, I picked up, I went to a record store and picked up a bunch of quadraphonic uh, quad pressings of records that I like. This is um, Al Cooper, Mike Bloomfield, and Stephen Stills. It's a super session. And if you're wondering about the quad, I don't have a quad set up to listen to my music, but these actually sound really, really good uh, just on a regular stereo uh, system as well. And a lot of times they have, um, some of, the, some of these quad mixes will have like completely different instruments that show up that you didn't hear in the regular mix. Sometimes they use like alternate takes and stuff. So they're very interesting uh, to pick up. So I thought I'd throw that in there to clean that. Also this uh, album by the band America, this is called Hearts. Again, this is a, a quad mix. 
Uh, and this album was produced by George Martin and engineered by Jeff Emmerich. Of course, George Martin and Jeff Emmerich worked with the Beatles. Uh, but besides the Beatle connection, I just like the band America and I like this album a lot. So I'll throw that in there. And then this is an album by Joni Mitchell, probably my favorite Joni Mitchell album. I know a lot of people love Blue. I love Blue as well. Um, but Court and Spark uh, is just uh, has a lot of personal, um, uh, just fond memories growing up of my parents listening to this. And so this is the quad uh, mix as well for Court and Spark. So I'll throw that in there. So I'm going to put all of these into the. Uh, the Vivor um, Ultrasonic Record Cleaner, and we'll see how uh, how it does. Now, in this video, I'll be doing a voiceover, obviously, and t explaining to you the process of cleaning the records and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I'm also going to play um, the records before they get cleaned. I'm going to play the intro uh, of the first side of all the records. I'll probably play like maybe three or four seconds, just because for, for YouTube and copyright reasons, I can't play the whole song, obviously. Uh, but just so you can hear that first. Um, the, fir the, the, the first intro uh, groove there. So it'll be, you'll get a really a good sense of how dirty the records are and how damaged the records are. Anyway, so you're going to, uh, you'll see the, um, the four albums. I, I picked four albums that I did a, a sample of the music from. Uh, they are going to be uh, Physical Graffiti, the record one, uh, uh, song one on, on the first side. Uh, it's gonna be Highway 61 Revisited, it's going to be the song Like a Rolling Stone, which is the first song on the first side. Uh, and then T for the Tillerman, it's going to be the first song on the first side, uh, Where Do the Children Play? And then finally, um, Donald Fagan's The Nightfly, uh, and it's going to be the first song, uh, IGY. So those are coming up now, and these are first going to be the, the before the cleaning, the dirty sound of the record, so you'll hear those now. Okay, so I set this up on my kitchen counter because you want to have two outlets available to you. Uh, one is for the actual machine itself and the other is for uh, the motor that uh, that turns uh, the actual records as they're getting cleaned. That's what I'm setting up right now. Um, as you can see, it's pretty easy to set up. Uh, it just uh, snaps on there and on the back there is a, a screw on the back that tightens it. So uh, you want to get that going and you want to make sure that you have it right in the middle so the records are able to uh, to rotate without hitting the sides of the basin. Now, I got it pretty close, but as you'll see, um, there was a little bit of an issue later on. I had to make an adjustment. Uh, so you wanna use distilled water. Um, the reason for distilled water is that uh, regular tap water uh, can have um, just minerals and just other, uh, other bits of things that you don't really want to have that end up in the grooves. So distilled water is the way to go. So as you can see here, I'm filling up the tank with the distilled water. Uh, and I'm just using this whole gallon um, and it'll go right below the line. You want to get it up to the line, but I wanted to wait and see uh, how far it got up when I put the records in because I could always add in water later. Uh, and here I am adding a, um, a, a cleaning solution and this is just the cleaning solution I've always used in my older uh, record cleaning uh, machines. Um, and I just used two capfuls. So I thought that would do the trick. I saw someone else online um, say they also use two capfuls and it seemed to be enough. So here I am putting in the first record and you want to just, you know, it's pretty pretty easy to do. You just slide it right on in there. Um, the one thing you want to be careful of is obviously is you don't want to damage the record um, by, you know, not of like putting it in too fast or scratching it on the sides or scratching it on the actual spindle itself. But yeah, putting in the record and then putting in the spacers, um, very, very easy. Uh, just very smooth. Everything is, is, is made 
really, really well, I'll say. Everything feels super, super solid. It's very snug, uh, which I was wondering about that, if the records would kind of uh, have a lot of give, but they don't. They really slide in there perfectly. Um, and at the same time, it's not too big where it's, you know, damaging your record in any way, like expanding the hole. So, yeah, it was just, it was very, very easy to get all the records um, loaded up on here. Uh, and as you can see, um, and there are some edits here, of course, so this isn't in, you know, perfect real time, but it was relatively, um, it was relatively easy as far as just getting all the records loaded up. Uh, and as you can see, the spacers, you want to put spacers in between each of the records. Very important to do. And I think I have a couple more records here to go. Um, I didn't really need to show you, I guess, every single record I put on, but I wanted to show you that you can put uh, up to eight records, and I really wanted to do eight because uh, I thought that would be the most, uh, the, the best way to really show the machine's uh, capability. So uh, there's uh, Donald Fagan's The Night Fly, and I think there's one more record. I think it's Cat Stevens I got to put on there. Um, so for the last record, um, which I'm putting on right now, there's Cat Stevens. Um, you don't have to put a spacer on at the end, but I did just because I thought it'd be nice to give it a little bit of extra protection for the label itself. I don't really know if these actually protect the label from uh, any of the water or, or getting a kind of type of a, a liquid on them like that and get some damage, but I just thought it'd be uh, safe to do it. So then you want to uh, screw on um, this screw at the end here to tighten it all up. And when I first did this, as you'll see, um, I tightened up and it I tightened it too much and it went past the, uh, the thread, so I had to go back and uh, just, you just want to get it snug enough is what I'll say. Uh, and then I finally got it there. And next up, I wanted to check the water levels and I needed to add a little bit more water. So I had a little bit more of distilled water left uh, in another uh, gallon I, I had previously for my old machine. So I filled it up there and I got it right up to the line. That is very, very important. It says on all the instructions here, it says you want to get the water right up to the line inside of the basin. Here I am turning on the machine, uh, as you can see. And um, I have the temperature set to, well, it, it's default set to 40, but I want to set it to 30 degrees because that's what I've read online. That's what other people did. It seemed to be um, plenty hot, uh, hot enough to get the records nice and clean. So I set it to 30. As you can see on the right, it lists that the current temperature in, in the basin is 20. So, but that'll go up as we uh, get the records going. I have it set for 30 minutes to uh, do a 30 minute cycle. So here we go, and it's off. Now I've got to say that the machine is pretty loud. I was surprised at how loud it actually uh, was. So just keep that in mind if you're recording or you have a sleeping baby or something like that. Uh, the machine is quite loud. Now this is a part um, that I wanted to keep in. Now obviously I've been fast forwarding here because I don't want to bore you with the whole 30 minute process, but um, during the 30 minute process here, about 28 minutes, uh, in or about two minutes in and 28 minutes to go um the records it, it it stopped spinning and i didn't really know what it was and what it actually was it was a user error so the error on my part you want to make sure that this when you put the spindle on to the basin that it's perfectly even otherwise the records will not be able to spin freely so what was going on here was that i didn't have it in there perfectly i had a little bit too much to the right so i had to just make a quick quick adjustment move it over to the left a little bit and as you can see now it's perfect uh, and um, yeah so you just want to make sure to check that before you start I didn't and uh, I wish I would so now you can and as you can see here uh, I'm showing that the machine got up to uh, 30 degrees which is great uh, and from what I've read online um, it's not all that important that the machine gets uh, that hot um, uh, and of course you don't want it to get too hot because vinyl uh, can melt of course so uh, 30 degrees seem to be uh, a perfect temperature uh, to clean these records. Uh, and as you can see here, uh, the cycle is about to be uh, complete and uh, it's got about 10 seconds left, but I wanted to leave this in here to show you, um, or rather so you could hear what the sound, it, it, the sound it made at the end here, which is happening now. And that was the uh, cleaning uh, cycle. So it was 30 minutes and uh, it seemed to be just no problem at all. It was a very, very easy, easy thing to do. 
Uh, and again, like I said, it was pretty loud. But other than that, um, it was no problem at all. So here I am uh, in very, very fast speed here, taking the records off. And again, you want to be very, very careful when you're taking the records off because it's so easy if you don't take your time to uh, scratch it against the spindle or you know hit it on the, the sides of the basin or something like that. So just take your time. So I got all the records off and then they give you this drying rack, which is very easy to, to put together. I put this in my downstairs bathroom uh, just so I could um, have it in a nice space where I could close the door and leave it overnight to dry. So that's exactly what I did. So as you can hear, uh, the machine did a really, really great job with these records. Um, some of these records, of course, are just kind of a lost cause. Um, I mean, like the Cat Stevens record is, there's obviously some, uh, some deep scratches in there that they're not going to come out from, from a cleaning. The record's just damaged. Uh, also, um, the, the Bob Dylan album has some issues as well. But overall, I got to say that um, for, if you hear the before and the after, um, the machine definitely did a good job cleaning these records. It took away a lot of surface noise that you um, that normally if you didn't clean them that would just be there and would just ruin the music. And I think the best example and the most accurate example of how I'm going to be cleaning my records is was the Donald Fagan album. This really uh, demonstrated just how great this machine is as far as cleaning records, uh, especially these high quality pressings like this Donald Fagan record. It really, really cleaned a lot of that that stuff that was deep down in the grooves here. Uh, because I mean, hearing it w before it got cleaned, it wasn't bad, I gotta say. But after the cleaning, it really showed you like it's now a pristine record. It went from like a probably like a, a VG, a very good if you were gonna sell it online, to a um, a, a, a VG plus plus for me, or even an excellent. So. The machine works, um, and I'm sure, by the way, I gotta say, just a little disclaimer, um, when it comes to cleaning records, I am no expert in any way, and I'm sure there are some other like uh, helpful uh, like hints and tips that other people have, uh, and maybe the process that I did to clean my records, I'm sure there was something I could have done that would have made it even better. And I'm sure over time, the more I get to use the machine, I'll find things that work a little bit better, and when I do, I will uh, make a video for that and show you, but uh, overall, the machine really, really worked well, and I was very, very impressed with it. And I gotta thank uh, uh, Beaver for sending me uh, this machine because it's really, really great, and uh, I'll be doing a lot of cleaning in the next couple of days. So, uh, by the way, I should also mention, if you wanna pick up this machine for yourself, uh, you can go to the link down below, and uh, it'll send you right there to show you uh, how to pick this machine up. And I should say, by the way, I think it's very, very reasonably priced because if you look, uh, elsewhere at other machines that do the same kind of thing, they are like double or triple the price. So really, if you are, if you were like me and you were just using one of the spin clean machines that you had to do by hand, and you're looking to upgrade your cleaning game, this is the next step, um, the next step up, and the next step that makes the most sense financially, uh, and just, um, just as far as making it easier for yourself for cleaning the records. 
So that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, and uh, again, I am not one to really make these kind of like sponsored videos or, or, or talk about a product that um, I don't really, I don't really like, but I'm just being kind of like nudged to talk about it. Uh, and in this case, I genuinely really, really like uh, this, this, this product. So I'm really, that's why I made a video for it. If I didn't like it, I would not make the video. I just want to make that very clear because I'm sure some of you are going like, what's going on here? Is he just going to be doing like advertisements for the next uh, couple of videos? No. <laughs> so that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, take care and uh, bye for now.